Well, good morning. I'm excited this morning. We're, uh, we are uh, wrapping up our series, Living Free. And I'm sure uh, everyone knows that uh, uh, to live free uh, it does not come uh, cheap and easy. Uh, we, we know the old saying, uh, freedom isn't free. And, uh, and there is a great truth in that. And then to remain free uh, takes uh, a diligent uh, lifestyle and takes vigilance on our part. Uh, to stand in that and and to contend for that at times. And today we're talking about something that is, on one hand, uh, so happy and and skippy and smiley and and thankfulness and a thanksgiving uh, attitude and and a thankful heart. And at the same time, uh, we know what scriptures tell us that sometimes uh, we want to encourage others with, but we don't really like it all on our own, of being thankful in and for all things. And uh, the reality is that a, a, a thankful life is a, is a life at times of warfare, uh, but it helps us to live free. So we're going to pray this morning and jump right into it. So why don't you join with me as we pray. Father God, I thank you for your written word. I love the, uh, the peace that comes in knowing that it is truth from the first word to the last, because it is you, Jesus, and you are truth. And so... Uh, Help us to live this out in the parts that are, that are full of life and exciting and joy-filled and, and don't take a lot of us other than uh, it makes us excited. Help us to be uh, thankful and joyful and encouraging to others and, and, and praising your name. And in those areas where it's challenging, where your words are challenging to us and, and, and where your commands are, 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 are hard at times and where we, where we step into the reality that, that we will suffer uh, in following you at times, help us to, to stand uh, full of faith and stand firm and live out this gospel. Holy Spirit, speak to each one of us today, and as you do, because you will, help us to respond to you. And God, as always, we want to give you all the glory that is due your name. Help us to worship you today in how we respond to your word to us. In your name we pray. Amen. I want to start off by telling a story that that really uh, firmly planted in me the understanding as much as I could, and I still grow in it, of what it means to live a thankful life. Uh, a lot of you know uh, the, pardon me, the, the story uh, a little bit, at least a little bit of my, uh, my firstborn son, Josiah, who, who died. Uh, and, and you may have heard different parts of that. If you haven't, I, and we, have, we have five kids, but our firstborn, uh, Josiah, died shortly after his birth. And... Through the course of that, uh, God took a, a bad story and what, I had, what we had to deal with and live through, and, and He used it in so many amazing ways. Uh, and, and, he, and He healed us along the way over the course of a year. Uh, after that, our lives fell apart, and then and the Lord beautifully, just because our lives needed to fall apart, He puts us on the potter's wheel, and He began to refashion us, and He did such an amazing restoration work in our lives. Um, and then we began to work uh, for the same church that ministered life and healing and health to us. And, and I was working uh, in this one particular ministry, and, uh, and I would teach oftentimes on Sundays or uh, Sundays during uh, like a Bible study class or on Mondays. And, and I remember I was praying about what to teach on uh, that following Monday, which was a few days away, and, and just asking the Lord what He wanted me to focus in on. And He said, I want you to... I want you to teach on being thankful in and for all things. I'm like, good, I love that. That's, that's the Bible, you know, yay. And he said, I want you to use Josiah's death as your main story. And I was like, well, we got a problem because I disagree with you there. And I was like, as soon as I said it, I remember thinking, I'm going to lose this battle. Uh, because, because he's like, I know we have a problem there, Scott. I'm your God, and you're not thankful in and for that. And I'm like, well, what? person would be because that's ridiculous I mean you're not but that is Uh, and he's like I know and we're going to go on a journey now and I'm like oh no it's going to hurt and I'm going to fight at you and then you're going to win so I might as well give up now but I still got to learn it all it's just this weird thing we've probably all been there like I need to learn this but it's hard and I don't know what to do and at the end I'm either going to agree with you or I'm going to sin and so I don't want to sin but the agreeing with you is painful. And so he took me on this journey and, and he started asking me all these questions. And as I just was just like, well, Lord, I would love to be free and being thankful for all things, but I don't get that one. I, I just don't get that one. And he's like, well, 
I'm going to ask you some questions, and I'm going to heal your heart, and then you're going to yield, and you're going to choose. I'm like, okay, you're going to win. Uh, and one of the questions he asked me is, Scott, what did you, at this time, um, we, uh, just had, we just had Zion, so we only had one of our five at the time, and the rest were, you know, coming later, I didn't know that, but we had Zion, and he was a baby, and, uh, and the Lord said, well, what, what has Josiah's death brought to your life? And I said, well, I said, it brought the end of me, and that guy needed to go. We both agree there. And he's like, yes. And I'm like, I can be thankful for that. And I was like, it actually helped me to become a whole husband because Sarah needed a whole husband because I was terrible and selfish and self-centered and in pain and lived prickly and crusty. Uh, and so it, it helped get rid of that guy, and, and you restored me. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm thankful for that. It, it, it showed me who you are as my father, and I've never had a dad, so that's huge. And it showed me who I am as a son. I've never understood that, and so that's huge. And, and I just began just, just one after another, and then I remember saying, and it helped me to be a whole dad for Zion, because if he'd have come before that, I probably wouldn't have been a whole dad. I probably wouldn't have been a whole dad for Josiah. I'd have been a broken, self-centered, selfish dad, and, 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 and I don't know what that would have looked like. And so I would love to have my boy here. But I'm thankful for what you did and, and even what you used to get me to this place. Both things are true. More than one thing can be true at times. I, I would love to have my son here, but I'm thankful that, that as odd as it sounds, and this is my story, and I've had people get mad at me for saying this, but I'm thankful that you took him because it changed my life forever and the, and the course of my, my marriage and the course of my kids' lives. I can be thankful for the death of my son as much as I'd love to have my son here. And he took me on this, this journey. Not easy, but it's what's asked of us. It's a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Like it says in Psalm 50, verse 23, when, 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 the, when the psalmist writes this and he says, the sacrifice that honors me is a thankful heart. Obey me and I, your God, will show my power to save. That's exactly what I saw my God do in my life as I painfully and then joyfully stepped into that truth of being thankful in and for all things. I stepped into that lifestyle, a thankful life that we're talking about today. And it was a sacrifice then. It wasn't an easy thing. I, didn't, I wasn't like, yes, I got this. I'm good. Bible and all. Yay. I, I was painful. It was a sacrifice but it glorified God. And then he saved me from a heart that would ever grow bitter. I, I have never been bitter at God since. Even going through junk that I go through at times because we all go through stuff. I've never looked at God and said, why didn't you? Now, if you do that, and it takes you through and you're healed. That, now I'm not saying now shame on you or anything, but he has saved me from ever being bitter and looking at him as a God who didn't come through for me. I've never been in debilitating pain since that moment about my son's death. Even though I'd love to have him here, it's part of my journey in being whole in Jesus. He saved me from who I was and used the death of my son to bring me there. So our big idea today is we look at what it means to live a thankful life. And we're in this season of Thanksgiving here in America. It's that a lifestyle of giving thanks is good for your soul. It, it keeps you focused on the goodness of God. And it keeps your heart free. So you can live free. A thankful heart will help you live free. I guarantee that. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says this. Paul writes, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus. You see, thanksgiving, the giving of thanks. That's, I mean, that's not a hard one to figure out, right? Sometimes we just say thanksgiving over and over, but I give thanks to God. I give it, no matter what, to God, is what Paul's talking about here. For who he is for all the blessings that He gives me in my life and provides for me, the things I understand, the things I don't understand, the things I see and the things I don't see, He blesses me and I give Him thanks for, for who He is 
and, and our giving of thanks to God should be a key distinctive mark of every believer no matter what you're walking through. And there are people in this church right here, in church even today, they're walking through things that I cannot imagine walking through. Some of your stories I know. The cool thing is God knows every story. And, and I see some of you walking this through with a heart full of joy and thanksgiving and hope and it just, it blesses and encourages me but it blows me away. I'm like, wow. Lord, could I do that? Could I do that? And the cool thing is that my loving Father always speaks to me when I say, I don't know if I could do that. He's like, yeah, because I, I, would, I would walk you through that. Because I'm walking her through that. And I'm walking them through that. And I'm journeying with Him in that setting. The key for us is never to let a spirit of ingratitude harden our hearts and, 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 and chill our relationship with God and with other people. Nothing turns us into bitter, selfish, dissatisfied people more quickly than an ungrateful heart, than a cynical, bitter spirit. And nothing will do more to restore contentment and, and, and the joy of our salvation other than a true thankful heart. That will restore you to, to, to contentment in Him and the joy of your salvation being what, what leads you. So I don't know what trials you face right now in fullness. Even if I know your story, I don't know what you're thinking every moment of every day, but God does. He understands it all. He loves you. He's committed to you. The Holy Spirit is literally, He's literally right there, like for you and in you, if you're a believer. So we must cultivate this spirit of thankfulness no matter what, even in the midst of the stuff of life. I mean, anybody out there going through stuff of life? Like, that's the kindest way you can say it, because other words would, like, get you in trouble, right? Like, I don't want to use adjectives. I'll just call it the stuff of life. And Lord, I, it's hard to be thankful. And he's like, I know, I know. That's why I gave you me in spirit form to help you walk this through. How about worshiping and praising God with a thankful heart the next time something is really tough. Mm, I don't like that. That's hard. Think about something that is really tough you're going through now or that, that might come, that, you know, holidays are coming and I don't know, end of the year different things might happen or you're looking at uh, doctor's visits or, or, or just stuff you know you have to talk about or deal with and, and you're thinking that could be really tough. How about praising God right in the midst of that? Yeah. I mean, that's... That's the spirit-filled life. What if you thanked God for his faithfulness the next time it was really awful? That's the first thing you did. Amen. You'd seem insane to the world around you because bitterness and angst and anger are the, uh, the way of the world and you should tweet about it so everybody can be angry with you or applaud you for your anger. But how about being thankful the next time it's awful? The thankful life is for the believer who says, I will follow. You see, there's a believer in Jesus, and then there's the believer who follows. That's called a disciple. So for the believer who says, I will follow, he says, I'm going to have a thankful heart. Yep. Thankfulness is warfare. Sometimes it's easy, and that's great. There's nothing wrong with a thankful, grateful heart being easy, but sometimes it's really warfare. Not being fake, but being truly sincere in, I really do thank you, God, in and for this. I really do. Let's choose thanks in spite of circumstances, in spite of what we see or what we don't see, how we feel or how this feels in our life, how it looks now, uh, how it looks as we kind of look forward and we project it out. We're like, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look like it's going to be good in the next X amount of months or years. How about choosing a spirit of thankfulness? Mark mentioned uh, King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20, and that's just a beautiful story of the power of praising God with a thankful heart. In this, in this story, uh, a little bit of backstory on it, uh, he's the king of Judah, which when the, when the, 
when the tribes of Israel split, and, and, and so Judah was, was kind of the better kingdom. They kind of always did a little better than Israel. And so he's the king of Judah, and he's a God-fearing man. And, and he hears that three armies, three nations, are, are banded together and marching towards them to wipe them off from planet Earth. Kind of like, a, of course, I'm a Lord of the Rings guy, right? Uh, and for me, the holiday season is always Lord of the Rings season, Thanksgiving through Christmas. That's Lord of the Rings season. Uh, and, and you just kind of picture that, that famous story, especially if you watch the movies, of these armies coming together that are going to destroy the, the world of men. And, and so J King Jehoshaphat's like, oh, they're going to wipe us off. That their goal is to be erasers and, and wipe us off the planet. And so what does he do? We read in, 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 in chapter 20 that terrified... He begs God for guidance. It says that he, here it says he calls the nation to pray and to listen. And then as they all gather, all knowing the news, the, the coming armies, it says that he prayed and, and spoke out about God's goodness and he asked God to rescue them. And then this guy named Jehaziel, who's a descendant of, of, uh, of a famous worship leader, he just gets all filled with the Holy Spirit and he prophesies to the nation. He just stands up. And uh, without a, you know, microphone and speakers, he just, they all hear him say this. And he says, no fear. God will win this battle for us. He says here, you won't even need to fight. God is with you. He tells the nation, stand still and watch it happen. And then they get all excited. The armies are still coming, but they start worshiping. They just break out in song and worship, giving thanks to God and and yet the armies are still on their destructive path. They're still facing down the barrel of all these guns, in essence. And it says that, that they headed out the next morning. They chose to praise and thank God along the way. They even said, hey, we're going to get all of our worship leaders. We're going to put them in front of the army. Like, how does that work, right? All the creators are like, wait, I don't even, I don't even have a gun. I don't have camos. I just got skinny jeans and I don't know what to do. I mean, can you imagine? All the creatives in front and all the army guys are in, you know, on their camos and they've got all their weapons. We're like, okay, all right, we'll see how this goes. But they're not, they're not actually worried. All the worshipers are marching out front, leading the army towards what is doom on a logical scale. And then they sang this song, verse 21. They sang this over and over and over. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Over and over and over. They sang that song. The guy prophesied, you won't have to do a single thing and God will win this. And it says in verse 22, at that very moment they began to sing. Those three armies turned on each other and they all killed each other. They all killed each other. When they came over the hill, everyone was dead. Everyone was dead. Like the last two must have like stabbed each other at the same time, right? Because there wasn't even a single guy like, oh, I'm the only weirdo left. You know, they're, they're all dead. They come over the hill. It took them three days to get all the plunder, like to gather all the goods. It's a crazy story. The power of a thankful heart. They praise God in thanksgiving, not knowing the outcome, but knowing the God who called them to it. See, there's power in giving thanks when we read this story. Great strength in, in doing this as a family. We see a community, uh, a nation come together, this community of, of followers of God coming together. Everyone playing their part, prophesying, singing, marching out in front. No lone rangers, no, no elevated God men. It's like we're all in this together following God. It's why we love membership so much here. Why, why family matters so much to us. We do this life together. It's a family. We, we come together and live life in a real way together, encouraging each other and shoring one another up, growing together, failing at times together, and then, and then encouraging and championing others together and watching people grow. Challenging one another in our faith. And even marching forward at times as a family, not knowing what is to come. We might have a word of the Lord about something, but we don't know how it's going to play out. But we still come together as a family. So that's why membership matters so much to us. It's not about numbers or a, a logbook or anything. 
It's about a family. And so I encourage you tonight, 5 o'clock, come. Right over here on this side of the, of the building. and We'll feed you and take care of your kids. But just find out who we are, where we're going, and, and what the Lord's saying to us. And then, and then pray about if God would have you be a part of this church family. Because community matters and family matters to Jesus. And hopefully there's no armies that are going to try to annihilate us as a church family. But if they do, I would rather walk forward praising God and thanking Him alongside you than all alone. That's what I would rather. Because you're good at praising God. And you're good at having thankful hearts. And the best days are still to come. And so we do that together and it's good news no matter what faces us in this world around us. Give thanks in all circumstances, Paul says. That's a key weapon. Even when you don't know the outcome or you're right in the midst of the struggle. And an enemy of a thankful heart is bitterness and cynicism. Assigning blame is a trap. Finger pointing, that's a scheme of the enemy. When something doesn't go right and you're like, yeah, but him and they and they didn't listen and uh, I know, but they don't. Just blaming and that cynical spirit of, yeah, well, ah, you know, them. That's a bad move. That's going to that's gonna try to choke out thankfulness and gratefulness in your life. And it's a scheme of the enemy. Finding reasons for your pain and things not going your way. Uh, having a, a poor attitude uh, or, or, you know, or, or blaming others for why life is so hard. That's, that's a scheme of the enemy. He's the reason that I, you know, I never grew my relationship with God. My spouse is why I'm not happy. My boss is the reason why work is just so miserable for me. He's why I never fulfilled my call of God, the call of God on my life. Those politicians, they just make everything bad and I just get so angry. Hey, some of that stuff might be truth in, in what, what factually happened, but you can choose a thankful heart. Because we are told over and over in Scripture to be thankful in and for all things. So what are we going to do? I don't like that part of you, Jesus. I'd rather be mad. Or you know what? This is the state of my life at work. That is how my boss acts, but I'm thankful. Because I can be Jesus to him. And man, does he need Jesus. You know, be real, okay? It's really easy to, to blame others for the problems that, that you had in life or the, the struggles that, that you're experiencing now the way things aren't working out for you or people you love. It's really easy to say, yeah, they need to, or they should, or they did. But a thankful heart will push bitterness out of the picture. Proverbs 17, 22, it's a beautiful scripture. A joyful heart does good like medicine. Medicine heals, it strengthens, it gets rid of sickness. A joyful heart is a thankful heart and it will heal your life like a medicine, no matter what's happening around you. You might have relational issues, like all around you, they might all have relationship flu, right? But a joyful heart, you're not going to get sick. You're just not. According to this, and this is either true or Jesus is a liar. That's, that's the bottom line. There's no like gray, like, yeah, sometimes he got it right and sometimes he didn't. No, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we live it out or we say, I, I just don't want to, you know, I'd rather sin or just not believe. So what's your response to tough times? Because your response, my response, reveals my heart. It reveals your heart. Jesus said in, in Matthew 12, 34, the mouth speaks what's stored in the heart. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When we're squeezed, what's in there comes out in how we act and then what we say. Trials, tests, challenges, they're going to reveal what's stored in your heart. They're going to reveal your attitudes. When tough times come, how you react, what comes out, where your thought life goes, is how the real you, the real heart in you, that is, reacts. So if things don't go your way and you just you get angry and you get finger pointing and you get blaming and you're cynical... Hey, you're not, you're not too far gone for Jesus, but that's real stuff. 
And you need to choose to repent of that and then say, Jesus, help me to have a thankful heart. And he's like, I'm all for you. So yes, I'm going to help you have a thankful heart. You either build your life around the truth or you live uh, on the winds of everything that comes and goes, good and bad in your life. The way that, that people act around you, the things they say, the things they do. What, what happens in, in, in your community. You either live by that or you live by the truth. And I guarantee you it's just going to be a miserable roller coaster ride if you live by those feelings and, and, and how just constant responses to that. Because God's at work in you in the midst of it all. Even when it's tough, He's at work in you. Like he's doing something and he's not far gone. It's not like he went on vacation and was like, oh, I had no idea that Rod was struggling. Golly, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Rod. Let me get back on my throne and work in your life. No, he's always involved in Rod's life. And sometimes it stinks what's going on. But God is always faithful. Because shots aren't fun, man. Constant pain isn't fun. I get that. I mean, that's my dear friend, and I, and I just wish I could take that pain from him. But Jesus is faithful. He gives him good things, but he's also faithful to journey with him because there's something bigger going on in his life and in our lives. He's at work uh, in, in a bigger way than we can see, so much more than we can imagine or comprehend. So when we choose a thankful life, it keeps our minds clear, it keeps our hearts safe, keeps our attitude right in a world that has bad attitudes it keeps our glasses of hope on like I, I, I see what you're up to I see where this could be going I don't even know really what you're up to but I trust you it helps us to see what he's doing with a, a, this, this, this mindset of oh I see what you're doing that's full of joy like instead of oh I see what you're doing it's like I see what you're doing you're growing me not always a fan of this, but you're growing me because I'm going to be strong because when I grow, I get better. So our goal in this living a thankful life is that we would choose to be proactive in looking for ways to be thankful, to live thankful lives, to honor God in our thoughts and our attitudes. A lot like we see uh, play out in the story of Peter this guy who went through a lot of stuff. And, and, and I'm going to wrap up with, with this story as we head into communion in a moment here. But in, in Luke chapter 22, they're sitting around and it's what we call the Last Supper. And, and, and they're all talking and Jesus is laying down a lot of stuff. And, and he kind of leans over to Peter. I can just imagine it kind of playing out. He's like, hey, Peter. And Peter's like, what, master? And he's like, Satan asked if he could sift you like wheat. And I told him... Well, actually, I went over here and I said, God, strengthen Peter's faith so that when he comes back and he's restored to you and to me, that he's able to encourage the people that follow you. And Peter's like, okay, let's go back to that sifting thing real quick. So he asked you to sift me like wheat and you told him no, right? Right? And Jesus is like, I prayed for you that your faith would be strong during it. And you told him no, and you backhanded him, correct? That would be a tough thing. Can you imagine sitting with the one that saved your soul, that you love, that you know is all-powerful? Like, there's nothing, it's not like me coming along and going, yeah, I really don't have much skill or whatever. But this is like the God, creator, can do anything. And he says to you, hey, hey, P you know, Peter or wh whoever you are, Satan wants to sift you like wheat, and so I'm praying for your faith to be strong during it. You'd be like, I need more words than that. <laughs> but Jesus knew that this tribulation to come would, if Peter would allow it, it would grow him into this person of destiny that God had for him, it would produce perseverance and character and hope in Peter. And so instead of Jesus saying, I'm taking away all the bad things that you'll ever walk through so you don't have to ever like, experience life, my prayer is 
that your faith is strong during it. What was needed for Peter was to go through this so that he could walk into his destiny and then we get the benefit of Peter, the man restored. Jesus allowed the trial to come. Jesus allowed the trial to come. Jesus allows trials to come. For Peter, he allowed it to come so he would become the man he was intended to be. So, should Peter be thankful in and for the sifting or upset at God for not stopping it? That's the question for all of us. It's a question for all of us to, to, to face today. Am I thankful in and for all things? All things? And by all, Jesus meant all things? Am I thankful in and for all things or mad that God doesn't take away the painful ones? And I'm not saying right now you got to change and like, you know, best life now and stop doing that. No, maybe it'd take a little journey, you know, walk that through. God's faithful. But this same Peter, a few, you know, uh, uh, we read in the book of Acts that like he gets flogged later on. And, and, he, and he's beaten and, and abused for, for following Jesus and preaching about Jesus. And he walks out of that, that beating time, like, excited. He's like, I'm so excited I got to suffer for Jesus. That's the same Peter. And then we read, 30 to 40 years after Jesus sat there and said this to him, we read this from Peter himself. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Hey, guys, you follow Jesus. Tough times are going to come. Fire. Instead, Peter writes, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. I think Peter's perspective here and the truth that we get as a result of it came because as he walked through the sifting times he chose to respond with a thankful heart and a joyful heart in the midst of it all this attitude of a thankful life that Peter lived out from from the time that Jesus said you're going to be sifted to the time he wrote this and and to the last days of his life so for us for me for you Are you choosing to live giving thanks? I remember a number of years ago, I remember I was on stage with a a friend of mine who pastored with me. It was the Sunday before Thanksgiving, so like next Sunday would be, you know. And uh, I think it was maybe 2007 or something, so 12 years ago or whatever. And our worship leader at the time, a friend of ours, uh, she said something that was so cheesy we couldn't help but bust into laughter on stage, and, and she called it uh, thanks living, like on purpose. Uh, and uh, sorry if you like that phrase. Uh, at the time, I, I was like, that's so cheesy. Instead of Thanksgiving, she called it thanks living. But I'll tell you this, as much as I laughed out of that day, it has never left my mind. Twelve years now, thanks living. Are you living thanks? Are you living it out? Or are you living it out only when it works out for you? So are you choosing to live giving thanks as a lifestyle or only when it fits your moment or your logic? Those are the questions we need to ask. Jesus gave thanks when he broke the bread that that night of the Last Supper. He he breaks it apart and he he pours the wine at at what we call the the Last Supper and, and it was this horrific moment, yet he was thankful for it. It's an amazing thing to to read that story and then to realize he's breaking the bread because he knows that's me being broken shortly. And as he breaks it, he's like, thank you, God, for breaking me for them. And as he pours the wine into into that, that, that cup to share with his best friends, he thanks God for the pouring of the wine, knowing this is my blood that's going to be poured out painfully but thank you God in this thank you God for this 
Because see, he lived with glasses of hope on. Because he knew it was for the salvation of many, for the redemption of mankind. So as we go into this, this time of communion here in a moment, I want to ask a, a number of questions of us, just to, just to think through, and, and maybe for some, it, it, maybe all these questions apply, and you need to respond to Jesus, maybe just one hits you, or maybe the Holy Spirit sp speaks something else to you. But let's really take some time here to, to check our hearts. We're told in Scripture that every time we, we partake in communion, we're remembering what Jesus did, dying on the cross for us, breaking his body and pouring out his blood for the forgiveness of sins. But it also says the communion is for believers to take and to remember, and that when we do, we need to make sure our hearts are right before God when we do it. We don't just take it flippantly. We don't take it in a religious manner where we don't even pay attention, but that we're really taking some time. And sometimes we take, I take communion and I'm just undone and broken. And sometimes I take communion and I'm just full of joy because of the whatever I'm, I'm, I'm I'm going through the moment, but, but that I really take some time to think about my relationship as it pertains to following Jesus. So let's take some time to think through this. Think about people in your life. Is there anyone that you have issue with, that maybe you have ought against, in a major way or in a slight way? Anger or unforgiveness? Maybe being snide towards them? because of how they are. Maybe they really are that way, but you've chosen to be snide towards that person. And Jesus is saying, hey, it's time to lay that down and forgive. How are you choosing to live your life as a believer? Is this leading you? Or is there a mixture of this and, and your own logic and the world's logic? Or, or is this just like a good thing you, you kind of uh, glance at sometimes? How do you live as a believer? Are you thinking like Jesus? Or are you, are you maybe gossiping about people and, uh, and, and living a life that, that doesn't look much different than the world? Are you choosing to give thanks in and for all things? Do you need to ask God's forgiveness today for anything in your life? Because know this, He'll forgive you. Guaranteed. He lives to forgive us for our sins. And maybe there's just something you need to make right with Him. This repentance before God saying, God, this is my thought life, or this is my actions, or this is what I have been unwilling to do, or this is what I've been doing. Forgive me. And He says, you're forgiven. Like probably before the words leave our lips or our minds, He says, forgiven. Because that's who He is. Is there a log in your eye that you need Jesus to remove so that you can have no, nothing in the way of having a relationship with other people face to face, life on life. So that your heart is set free and it's pure before him as you take communion today. Maybe you're here and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. Communion is for believers, but here's the good news. Anyone can become a believer at any moment when they surrender their life to Jesus and say, I want your life in place of mine. I want to believe in you. I want to follow you. I want you to be my Savior and my Lord, my daily King. And if you're here today and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, he says, just let loose of your old life and, and take hold of mine. Call on, the name, call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. So if you're here and you're not a believer, man, believe today and then take communion as the very first act of a following believer of Jesus. Do you need to commit today to going to someone and, and maybe making something right? Like they're not here and you can't make it right right now, but Lord, forgive me of this and, and I'm going to go and I'm going to make that right I'm going to go and make that relationship right. I'm going to own what I need to own, and they don't owe me anything. I'm going to reconcile with that person. Even if they maybe don't care or they don't own their stuff, I'm still going to reconcile, God. I commit to that to you today. So your heart is clean and pure before me, and I guarantee you it will help you have a thankful heart if you get rid of the, the junk that weighs you down. Would you stand with me now? We're going to go into this time of, of communion. And after I pray, the guys are going to hand out the communion elements as we sing a song. And then at the end of that song, Pastor Ben will lead us in a time of communion before we sing one final song. But as I pray, and then, and then even as we sing, 
there's anything you need to make right with Jesus today prior to partaking communion, just do that where you are. He hears you. He knows you. He loves you. He longs to have perfectly right relationship with you. And so he will gift you anything you need. If you need the courage to go to somebody later on and make something right, he will help you do that. If you need to, 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 to be forgiven of something, he will forgive you. So as we go to this, the, in this song and, and, and take time to uh, just think about Jesus and turn our minds to him, just deal with anything you need to deal with between him and you. Let's pray and then let's sing. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness to us. I thank you that uh, you are on our side more than we are on our own side. You are for us more than we would ever be for ourselves. And that is good news because we have the God of heaven, the creator God, the Savior Jesus for us. And for believers, we have the Holy Spirit of the living God in us. So help us to make our hearts right before you today. Help us to, to, to get rid of anything that tries to encumber us or, or keep us bound today so that we can truly live a life of thanksgiving before you. That we can be the ones known as people who live thankful lives. Forgive us of those things we need to be forgiven of. Help us to reconcile those things that we have it within our power to reconcile. Help us to walk in obedience before you. If there's anyone in this room that does not know you, they've never made a decision to follow you, Jesus, I pray that they say right now, I want to follow you. I believe in you. Be my Savior. And they would be saved and then take communion thinking about all you did for the salvation of their very soul. Speak to us right now during this song. Minister to our hearts and help us to take communion with pure, clean hearts before you, God. In your name we pray. Amen.